by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And Bill will now join us, or Chrissy will now join us. I'm sorry, Chrissy, I'm unmuting you so that you can do the reading from Genesis. A reading from Genesis. The same night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob, then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? <clears throat> and there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, for I have seen God face to face and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. And now Joy is going to lead us in reciting Psalm 17. Joy, you should be able to unmute. Thank you. Hear my plea of innocence, O Lord. Give heed to my cry. Listen to my prayer, which does not come from lying lips. Let my vindication come forth from your presence. Let your eyes be fixed on justice. Weigh my heart. Summon me by night. Melt me down. You will find no impurity in me. I give no offense with my mouth as others do. I have heeded the words of your lips. My footsteps hold fast 
to the ways of your law. In your paths, my feet shall not stumble. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Show me your marvelous loving kindness, O Savior of those who take refuge at your right hand from those who rise up against them. But at my vindication, I shall see your face. When I awake, I shall be satisfied, beholding your likeness.
And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jacob's name became Israel, the God wrestler. Well, that being the case, the family of Israel is truly larger than the nation bordering on the Mediterranean Sea because I don't think I know one person who hasn't wrestled with God. Wrestling is an interesting sport. I know a little bit about wrestling because I was once engaged to a wrestler, and later, I married one. And my dad was also a wrestling coach for a season or two at the middle school where he taught physical education and coached a myriad of other sports. I not only went to my boyfriend's wrestling meets, I also announced at the meet at my middle school. It was during my I want to work in sports information phase Wrestling is intense. Two people are trying to pin each other's shoulders to the floor, using different types of holds to do so. The point is that the two wrestlers are wrapped around each other using practically every muscle in their body to either pin or keep from being pinned to the mat. The match ends if one person's shoulders meet the floor or if one outscores the other in takedowns or escapes when the bell sounds. Unlike boxing, wrestling has no protective gear other than a head guard. It's you and your opponent engaged in the least of physical distancing, the most highest energy exertion contest ever and body hair is your enemy. Now you might think that a wrestling match is something that is only between the two wrestlers. And you would be correct because a wrestling meet is a series of matches ranging from the lightest weight category to the heavyweight category. And whichever team wins the most matches wins the meet. Therefore, when you are wrestling, you are doing so for the team as well as for yourself. When I imagine Jacob at, Jacob, at Jabbok Creek, he's wrestling with, a far, with far more than just a strange angel. He's wrestling with shame for cheating his brother out of his birthright. He's wrestling with anger over Laban's outrageous substitution of Leah for Rachel. He's wrestling with his own faith. Why else would he ask for a blessing from the stranger? Did Jacob not receive a blessing from Isaac? Wasn't it good enough to take that from his brother? Does he think winning the match would take God's blessing from Esau as well? Oh, Jacob, you're a mess. Like so many who need external confirmation for what already exists internally, Jacob ends up out of joint. The God wrestler goes to meet his estranged brother with a limp. To his amazement, Esau welcomes him joyfully. There was nothing to worry about. He spent the night locked up in his own angst over nothing. Did he not think that God was watching over his brother? Was he so self-absorbed that the community of the sons of Isaac couldn't have been imagined? He may have been defeated in his social match, but the goodness of God had won the meet. Now the disciples wrestled with Jesus in much the same way. Never truly trusting him, they looked out for themselves. They only had two fish and some loaves. 
There was barely enough to feed the 12 of them. If they were going to care for themselves and others who were in the Nazarene's entourage, they had to get somewhere to purchase more to eat or to fish for the rest of what they needed. And to do that, the crowd needed to disperse. But Jesus knew what the crowd needed. And as any good rabbi would, he asked them to sit down while he did his teaching. Instead of fighting over what was available, Jesus blessed what was available. It was miraculously more than enough. We don't know how. Some theorize that the prayer of blessing brought out the best of everyone, and they began to share what they had. Others believe the loaves multiplied, just as described. Some wonder what happened to the fish. But whatever happened, it was an event to behold. All four Gospels tell this story. So something significant went down on that beach that day. It's a story of abundance and generosity. Before the crowds knew they needed to be fed, they were fed. The loaves were no match for God's generosity. Jesus won the day because it wasn't about one or two or even 12 people. It was about the community. It was about keeping people fed. Today, like Jacob, we're wrestling with a lot of stuff. Some of it may threaten to pin our shoulders to the mat. And one thing about all those wrestler types I've known and loved, they work really, really hard to build their muscles so that they could fight back against their opponents. So spiritual struggles and wrestling require us to work out too. We cannot go up against a foe for not having put in the time of prayer, scripture, and self-examination. Because if we do, we will find ourselves flat on the mat. Hard work ahead of time, plus trust in the generosity of God, combine to make us strong and help us persevere. And as strong as we may train ourselves to be, we must remember that our wrestling is more than just a solo match. We're a team. And we have each other's backs, even if we lose a match or two. If we stay strong together, our blessings will be multiplied. Let us say it together in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Spirit, he became part of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the house of our He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will come in the land. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic Catholic Church. We acknowledge all the baptism and for forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare to begin our, the prayers of the people, please 
keep in your hearts those who are on the front lines of this pandemic for Ann Taylor who is in mourning and I ask a personal favor of prayers for my mother who is in the emergency room let us pray let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all those who have died, that your mil will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. God, our creator, our center, our friend, we thank you for our good life, for those who are dear to us for our dead and for all who have helped and influenced us. We thank you for the measure of freedom we have and the extent to which we control our lives. And most of all, we thank you for the faith that is in us, for our awareness of you and our hope in you. Keep us, we pray you, thankful and hopeful and useful until our lives shall end. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may abide in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. This is a time we usually have for announcements. I know that the uh, vestry is having a special meeting this week, and the uh, reopening task force will be meeting within the next two weeks, so please check the calendar for that. Um, again, if you would like to pick up a reserve sacrament to take to your home so that over the next three four weeks you can uh, be able to consume the, the sacrament as we are doing so here, uh, please give me a call or send me an email to make the time available for you to come and pick it up. It's here at the church. Is, uh, Jeffrey, do you have anything that needs to be said in the music department? You've got a concert in two weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks. So let's 
looking forward to that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Our Savior Christ has taught us we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Those at home who are not able to receive the sacrament physically, let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, O oh Jesus. And let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.